There's no one way to structure an assignment because it depends on the data you're collecting, the methodology you're using, your general approach to the assignment, and a whole bunch of other factors as well. What I'm gonna do here is present you with some ideas on how you might structure your assignment, and then you can make the decision on how much of this applies to you. If I were writing my own IA, I'd most likely include the following sections. I want to emphasize again, however, that this is just a suggestion and you don't need to stick to this exactly as it is here. If we look at the marking criteria you'll be assessed on, you can see how my list fits with it. In some places, the assignment sections have the same or similar titles as the marking criteria. Whatever structure you go with, make sure you address all of the marking criteria. It's there in the subject guide and you should keep it on hand throughout the writing process. The research question section can be nothing more than your relevant, coherent, focused research question. Within the context section, you should discuss your environmental issue, then explain how your environmental issue and research question are connected. These are required in the marking criteria, and the bit about connecting your environmental issue and research question is something I often see students skip. It's important and has to be included somewhere. For sampling strategy, you need to discuss the data you will collect, how you will collect it, and why you will collect it in that way. This last step of justifying your sampling strategy is required in the mark scheme, and it's another part that is commonly skipped. The procedure could be a step-by-step -step series of instructions on how you carry out your investigation. It's important that you include information on what you intend to do with your data. Basically, how will you get a conclusion from what you've collected? I've often seen procedure sections end with a final step that says something like, finally analyze the data, or plot a graph with the collected information, and then nothing more. This isn't sufficient because how you will analyze the data or how you will use the graphs you plot should be detailed in the procedure. Health and safety should be included. Consider the list of possible hazards, which are the things that could go wrong and harm you or someone else, and the risk or likelihood of each hazard occurring. You should discuss what you will do to prevent or minimize the chances of anyone getting harmed. Ethical considerations should be outlined if you're doing experiments involving animals, if the experiment somehow has the potential to damage an ecosystem, or if you're collecting data from people. Remember that you often have certain ethical responsibilities to use data appropriately, even if it is taken from secondary sources. For ethical considerations, be sure to read the IB Animal Experimentation Policy and comply with it. The results section is where you present your tables, graphs and diagrams that display your data. The analysis section is where you identify patterns within the data. It's tempting to present a graph and discuss it with a sentence like, from the graph, it's clear to see that, and then you describe the trend you observe. But in my opinion, this is not very good. If you want to provide a thorough analysis, in addition to any graphs and tables, I would recommend, you've guessed it, Statistical analyses are a good way to minimize subjective opinions. They let you give more concrete foundations on which to base your conclusion. There are different approaches for different data types, and it's likely only one or two of these will be useful for you. You might be a little confused by which analysis method you need and how to use it, but your ESS teacher or your math teacher will be able to nudge you in the right direction. A conclusion should be very easy to write if you've done the analysis correctly. You just need to interpret the patterns you've presented to answer the research question. The evaluation should discuss the validity of your conclusion. You should discuss the strengths and weaknesses in your method and also the improvements you could make. Applications is the section where you put your conclusion into context and use it to suggest a solution to the environmental issue that you've presented. To gain the highest marks, you also have to evaluate the solution you present by discussing its strengths and weaknesses. Lastly, include a bibliography. Here, every single place you took data or information from should be listed. Make sure you start this section at the very beginning of writing your assignment. Don't leave this part until you've finished, because it's really hard to find your sources all over again. I know this from experience. <laughs>